with OKC. You know, I look at them as the biggest threat in terms of them looking for a five. Now people are questioning it. Would Pressy spend that amount of money on a player like an like an I Heart? What, what do you think about that? You know what they. You know what when you look when you study Oklahoma City, it's not and they're they're it's not kind of how they've gone gone about business. Now, does that mean that things change? It could. I think when you look at them, and they're look they're sitting around thirty three million dollars in room. You know they've got some. They've got a two year financial window before. Um, you know next off season, uh, Chet and Jalen Williams are extension eligible. Then the following year, Shea is extension eligible. So all of a sudden, these costs start to add up. When you look at how they put together the roster, they don't go out and sign free agents. That's not their nature. They went out and signed Bismarck Biombo and yeah. um, Mike Muscala minimums, even Lou Dort who's on this 17, $18 million contract. He was an undrafted free agent. You know, mm-hmm. Isaiah Joe was a, you know, undrafted, you know, Philly had waived him undrafted guy. Um, I think for them, it's, it's kind of like, you know, they've got so much draft equity, you know, where do we find someone in maybe in, in, in the, um, in, um, you know, in the trade market, like Jared Allen, for example, yeah. for yeah. me, like that would make more sense where you get two years left on Allen's contract instead of maybe committing four for, you know, 24, $25 million. Cause, but you never know. I mean, yeah. listen, they, they, you know, when you get to a, a second round, like Oklahoma city did and you were, and it was a competitive second round, you might think, you know what, how we've gone about business before, you know, maybe we have to change our thinking as far as become more active in, in free agency. Hartenstein uh, did sign a two-year deal with the Knicks two years ago at roughly r- roughly like $8 million. Now, the max they can offer him is four years, 72. Just explain real quick the, yeah. the early bird ride situation here and why they can't offer him anymore. Yeah, so uh, he's different than OG. So OG um, has bird rights. So bird rights gives you the ability to exceed the salary cap, and it gives you the ability to sign a player up to um, up to five years. So OG can, if he declines his option, he can sign for up to thirty percent of the salary cap. Basically, his bird rights have transferred with him from Toronto. He signed a rookie contract. He extended, and then those rights were tra- uh, when he got traded. Those transfer with him. With with Isaiah is different because he signed a two year deal. If he had signed a three year deal and let's say he'd become a free agent next year, then he would have full bird rights. So bird rights is three years. Early bird rights is two years. So mm-hmm. you're you're limited as far as how much of a first year starting number could be. You know whether it be 175 percent off his, you know this this past year um or the average player salary average player salary is you know like 12 point let's say 12.9 million dollars it's kind of like what austin reeves went through last year so that's why you're seeing it capped at a certain number at four for 72.5 million dollars the hard thing is is that the early bird has to be for a minimum of two years as far as what the next contract would be so it's not like he can go out there and sign a two-year deal on what a player option for the second year and say, you know what, I'm going to establish my bird rights next year, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to do a, a one plus one, and then I'm going to be a free agent next year, and then I'm going to be um, because I'll have three years with New York here. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't go out and do that by using early bird. So it's got to be a minimum of two years. The challenge now becomes as, as far as if a team like Detroit all of a sudden <clears throat> comes in and says, you know, what, we're going to give you four for a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's going to have to make a decision. Right. Or if, um, Oklahoma City comes in and says, you know what? We think we're, you'd fit perfectly next to Chet. Here's four for 80. Do I think so? Probably not. It's not in their style that how they go about doing things. Um, but you're limited as far as, you know, how you how much money you can go out and offer him. And, you know, it's it's funny, like all these, you know, he was his contract turned out to be a great value. Right. Yeah eventually value turns into something else and then you're kind of limited as far as what you can do. Yeah. I hope that they take care of him, but then where does that leave Mitchell Robinson and his future with the Knicks? I mean, Mitch is my guy. He's the elder statesman, yeah. longest tenured Nick on the team, a, a good story, but with the injuries, I, you just can't rely on, you could pencil him in to miss time every single year. How, how do you, how do they invest in him as a starting five, knowing that he's not going to be there at critical times for them? 
you know it's 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 a great point and i think that's why isaiah becomes a um becomes a priority i mean you we haven't even talked about precious too who's right. a restricted free agent you know when you when you when you dissect the new these new rules in this collective bargain agreement it always was that when you were doing a deal you're signing a player it was always about the luxury tax right mm -hmm. like and it was really just a matter of like ownership right so if if leon if we're under the old cba and we're, but, but with this current team this off season right now so let's mm -hmm. say this the 2017 it really would be like leon just going to james dolan saying hey we're going to go into luxury taxes how much does it cost us now, how these rules are, these apron rules, mm -hmm. first and second apron. I feel like I'm like a weatherman saying like, there's a hurricane coming. <laughs> like I'm telling everyone and everyone's like, no, it's not going to hit shore. And I'm like, no, it's going to hit shore.